Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the chain rule for calculus, and this is needed for AP Physics C, Mechanics and e and m depending on what class you're taking. So this could be useful for Calc, for AP Physics C, Mechanics, or AP Physics C, e and m First off, in the big picture, we could say the chain rule is incredibly useful. It's kind of like Windows on a computer. If you have a window, let's say, so a window like folder on your desktop, you can also have another window inside that window ad infinitum. You can just keep going like that forever. You can have a nearly infinite amount of windows within windows. It's kind of similar with the chain rule where you can have a function embedded inside another function and it can just keep going. And so what the chain rule is, is a way to deal with a composite function that has a function within a function, so to speak. So there's an inside function, an outside function, and you can continue the process as many times as needed. But we're going to start with a very simple example. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's say this is your composite function right here that we're having to deal with. And so it says f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 all in parentheses to the fifth power. The first thing you want to do is think about what is the inner function and what is the outer function. In this case, the inner function is going to be labeled in blue, that 2x plus 3, and the outer function is going to be labeled in red, that parentheses to the fifth power. So the first thing we're going to do, if we take a look at our strategy over here, is we're going to take the derivative of the outer function and leave the inner function inside the parentheses for the time being. Write it as given, meaning treat the given inner function just as being carried along. And that's what you see right here if I label this as step 1, step 2, and step 3. If you take a look at this, you can see going from step 2 to step 3, we've done something with the outermost function, but we initially are leaving the innermost function. That's 2x plus 3. We took the derivative of the outside. So if something, some variable to the fifth power, you take the derivative of that, you bring down the 5 out in front as a coefficient, and you reduce the power by 1. Well, 5 becomes 4, and that's what you can see in red right here. And then you're also going to take the derivative of the innermost function and multiply it to the other function. That's what we can see right here. This 2 is the derivative of 2x plus 3. Then you can simplify a little bit. Notice we have a 2 and a 5 as coefficients. We can multiply both of those together and end up with 10 times what we have left over. And we don't need to do anything else with it. We can leave it as is. So that's the first method of approaching this. I think this is the easiest way to think about it. Let's take a look at a different way of thinking about this. This is the Leibniz notation here that you will have to become familiar with because this is on your equation sheets right here. So you may be wondering, well, what the heck does this mean? So this I'll call method two. We'll have to see that basically they're extremely similar. But if you become familiar with this, this has the added benefit of you being able to glance at it on test day and know what's going on. So it's highly recommended that you become familiar with this and say, okay, I can figure this out. I can do this. So let's go back to the same equation that we used previously. This is our example here that we used in the first method. Let's use it for the second method. So first of all, let's say we're going to define u as our inner function. So we are going to say u is equal to 2x plus 3. So it's like in programming when you say let something and you define what that something is. It would be helpful if you write this out. I don't believe that that is required, but... If you can get in the habit of doing this, not only does it make it easier, it makes it more clear for your reader when you take the test. All right, then it says take the derivative of the outer function with respect to u. So the outermost function, the way to think about this is to think of this as df du. So the derivative of the outermost function with respect to u would be the derivative of u to the fifth. Well, what's the derivative of u to the fifth? derivative of u to the fifth would just be 5u to the fourth. And you can think about taking the derivative of the inner function. And so the inner function, we'll say, is going to be represented by du dx. So the change in u with respect to x, you can think of it in those terms. And so what's the derivative of 2x plus 3? 
Well, it's just going to be 2, because 3 is a constant, the derivative of a constant is 0, and the derivative of 2x would simply be 2. That would be like the slope of a line of 2x, so to speak. Then, note what we're going to have right here. This is our strategy where we're going to say, all right, so df over dx is the same as multiplying these two things together. So df over du would be 5u to the 4th, times 2. So 5u to the 4th times 2, what is that? Well, that will end up being 10u to the 4th, which is not our final answer, so just be careful about that. I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm going to take this and write the rest of it. The key is at the end of it, now you need to substitute in what u is equal to. So df over dx is equal to 10, and we sub in what u is. Well, u we said was 2x plus 3, and that is the same answer that we ended up with previously. Now you may say, hey, that is a little more cumbersome than the first method, and I would agree with you, but this is the method that's on your equation sheet. That's why I'm saying it may be useful to become familiar with this one, or if you just really want to nail down the first method, that's fine too. As long as you really know what you're doing and show what you're doing carefully, you're going to be okay. Okay, so let's try some example problems and just see how it goes. So the very first thing we're going to do here is think about what our inner function is and what our outer function is. So this, of course, is going to be our inner function, and then this is going to be our outer function. And so the first thing you can do is take the derivative of the outer function, and so we're going to say minus 2, and then you leave whatever is inside. So here I'm using method 1, and I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, and so if we take the derivative of this, notice that that negative 2 drops to a negative 3. This can be confusing for students. Remember, you're going to subtract 1 from this. Well, it's like adding a negative 1. You can think of it that way if you want. So this is the derivative of the outer function with the inner function left as is. Then we say, all right, well, what's the derivative of the inner function? And multiply that by what we had previously. Well, the derivative of the inner function, 4t squared, that would be just 2 times 4, which would be 8t. And the minus 3t just turns into a minus 3. This is essentially your answer. If you wanted to, you could put this into a different form. Or you could say, well, that's minus 2 times 8t minus 3 over what we have in those parentheses up there with the negative 3 power. Oh, let me write this, not to forget that. So that's an alternative way you could write this. All right, let's try another problem and see how it goes. So for this problem right here, y is equal to the cube root of 1 minus 8z, it's really crucial to start the problem by converting anything that has a root system into a power system. So what we would do is we would write y is equal to 1 minus 8z to the 1 third power. So we're going to take the derivative of this. So we could say y prime is going to be equal to, we bring the 1 third power out in front and we drop the exponent by one full unit. So let me go ahead and write this minus 8z over here. So that would be a negative 2 thirds power. So what I've done is I have done the derivative of the outside of the equation. And that's not easy to do if you're unfamiliar with it. And now let's go ahead and do the derivative of the inner equation. Well, what do we have left? Well, we've got this minus 8 value that we can't forget. And so if you want to clean it up a bit, you could write 8 thirds, negative 8 thirds to the 1 minus 8z to the negative 2 thirds power. That's how you could do this problem. All right, let's try a couple other examples. So you do need to become familiar with some trig functions, just the derivative of sine and cosine. So it turns out that the derivative of sine is cosine, but a lot of times you can end up with an embedded function right here that you need to deal with. So a very simple one that we could take a look at would be something like this. If f of x is equal to cosine of 3x, then f prime of x is so the derivative of cosine of 3x. You actually have to treat this as an inner function, and this is the outer function, and do this like a chain rule problem, because 3x is its own function. So let's go ahead and use the chain rule for this. 
it turns out that the derivative of cosine is minus sine, and I'm going to leave the inside alone. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 3x would just be 3. And so to simplify, we could just say minus 3 sine of 3x. So that would be the derivative of this. You would actually have to use the chain rule for something as deceptively simple as this. All right, so let's try something else here. If you take the derivative of the natural log of something, you end up with the inverse of that. And in fact, the constant disappears. So you can say, well, why is that? And now we can answer that problem. So let's take a look and see if we use the chain rule on this. So we'll try using the chain rule here because you can think of this 2x as an inner function right here. So we'll think of this as our inner function and this is our outer function. And if we do that, then we can say, well, the derivative of the natural log is going to be the inverse of that thing. So it would be 1 over 2x times the derivative of the inner function. Well, the derivative of 2x just is 2. And it turns out that those will cancel and the constant disappears. So you end up with 1 over x. And that's why the constant disappears. So it really is easier than it first appears. All right, and what I'm going to do last of all is say, hey, please try this one right here. Maybe I'll put the answer in the comments so that the video isn't too long, but you can give it a shot yourself and see how it goes. Hopefully this has been helpful, and I've covered all the major ideas in a normal physics class as well as we'll be covering all of the major ideas in an AP physics class mechanics. I hope you all have a great day.